Now it's fawn time in the whitetail woods and when you're finding and locating those fawns out there, it's pretty interesting if you relate that fawn cover back to the best fall habitat and best fall whitetail cover, there's a direct correlation between the amount of stems per acre that fawns are hidden in and the amount of stems per acre that mature bucks choose to call home during the fall. And I believe it relates all back to that fawning cover. The fawning cover has the best stem count per acre in the area. It could be grass. And even if this grass is laying down in the fall, which it will be, it's still the example that those fawns are hidden in this tall grass and choose to call and, and does choose for them to call this home during the summertime because it's the best hiding cover. And, and again, I believe that it goes back to that safety and security of that mature buck when he's four, five, six years old on down the road. Not that he lays in this grass during the fall because it's not here, but he chooses that stem, that high stem count. That high stem count breaks apart scent molecules. A fawn hardly smells at all anyways. There's hardly any scent that it gives off. So a predator, a lot of times, like a bear, or maybe even a bobcat, are the ones that can pick those fawns out the best because they will be very patient, look for that fawn. They have incredible um, noses, and they can scent that fawn maybe within a few feet. But even then, they don't get all of them because the older a doe becomes, they've had they have studies that show the further that she puts her fawns apart, and that ensures the survival of the species, that they don't get two fawns at once. There's actual scientific name for that. But bottom line, relate that, stems, that stem count per acre to an open hardwoods, or to an open fallowed field, or an open, open CRP field where it's all laying down flat and you just have a few tufts of grass here and there. It doesn't supply a lot of cover. It doesn't supply that, those stems per acre. So when you're going into fall, you want hardwood regeneration, you want switchgrass that stays up the entire season. The switchgrass, at least in the upper Midwest, is the only grass that's going to stay up all season long. You want shrubs. You want briars. You want cover types that offer a lot of stem counts per acre. That also, also includes a lot of browse. So where those mature bucks are choosing to call home, not only do they have a lot of cover, they have those high stem count per acre, but they also have a lot of browse. It's hard not to have high stem count per acre when you don't have a lot of browse in combination. Usually the two go hand in hand, and those are some of the best fall whitetail holding hotspots. Interesting um, feature about that is that you often find that some of those same stem count, high stem count per acre areas, they've done studies where mature bucks will have more of a barbell relationship to two different areas of, that they call they choose to call home. Around here I call that the whitetail habitat shift or on any whitetail parcel where a mature buck lives in one location during the summer and he lives in another location during the fall. There's even some thought that during the summer he's kicked out by his mother, he lives in another area and he actually goes back sometimes to that fall range or vice versa um, where he had that comfort as a fawn and he had that high stem count, maybe a hardwood regeneration area or a shrub dominated um, habitat. So think about that going into this hunting season. Think about right now where these fawns are choosing to call home and why. And then look at those high stem count per acre areas going into the hunting season where a mature buck might call home. If those mature bucks disappear on you, they turn nocturnal. Really look at the aerial photo around you. Look for small tops on the aerial photo and trying to find those areas where you know there's a high stem count per acre and where those bucks might be at, where they're shifting to. The cool thing is that mature buck can't live in that location he likes during the summer, during the fall. During the summer, when he has a big velvet rack growing, he can't crash that rack through those high heart, uh, stem count areas of hardwood regeneration, briars, shrubs that he prefers to live in during the fall and his fall habitat during the summer months. So he wants open or overstory shade. Pretty interesting how he'll go from the high stem count and security of his fawning days. He'll go into the open hardwood regeneration areas with high canopy, good airflow and shade and cool temperatures during the summer. And then eventually he goes right back to the safety and security type of his habitat when he's fawning. I think there's a lot we can learn from addressing fawning habitat, at least 
scouting it, understanding why fawns were, were, are where they're at. Now, I don't want you to create a doe factor on your property where you have those big summer food sources and you have good fall season habitat that is just inviting for those con competitive fall uh, summer grounds for, uh, for does that are rearing the young in their fawns, but in great competitive fawning grounds. But again, high stem count per acre. If you're looking for it, if you're scouting for it on public land, or if you're creating for it, you're creating it on private land this fall, that's what those mature bucks need to live in. And to me, it all goes back to their fawning cover. And that's something that you can scout right now during the off season.